do. What's up, everybody? Junior Steve checking in for this momentum momentum morning here on March 2nd, the second day of the month. Let's keep that consistency going, everybody. Getting our live comment check-ins below, commenting with your habit that you are working on to let yourself know that you're taking your habit seriously, reinforcing that to your subconscious brain, and also getting those reward chemicals that make doing that pathway more addictive. Human body is wired to do the path of least resistance, so we have to think of creative ways to keep ourselves more consistent. Otherwise, if we just go with our natural instinct of the body, we're going to be moving less, which at the end of the day is not so useful. Okay, I'm going to move over now to the quick jump on some tips, four tips to work out and train at home. These are borrowed. These are not exactly my tips, but I thought they were useful. So I'm going to share those and then do the habit roll call check-in of the day. All righty, here we go. Tip number one to working out at home. Let's zoom this bad boy in here. Stay consistent and avoid the boredom. So consistency uh, comes from commenting and checking in in this group, but also comes from being entertained by what you're doing. Now, the problem is, is if you're training something, you're doing the same thing over and over again, and that can get kind of boring. The way we circumvent that is by increasing a progressional element on a thing. So if you're doing squats every day and you're going up by one rep each day, there's something in your brain that says this is a new and novel experience because I did one more than yesterday, which is going to help you stay more consistent. Here they also recommend trying out a very a variety of other workouts like high intensity interval training or switching to bands or whatever, just switching around to something you haven't done recently. But what is more important to me is maintaining that progressional element so that you can see that you're increasing growth on what you're doing. Tip number two, find an exercise partner. Having a workout buddy really locks you in to doing whatever it is you're supposed to do. All the way back from when I was in college and I was in a frat, we would get drunk and party at night. And then in the morning, I had a couple of friends who were just so dedicated to training, even if they were hungover. Six o'clock in the morning, they're like, Steve, let's get to the gym. I would have never made it to the gym if it wasn't for those fellas. Same thing when I'm training with my clients. If I'm doing something like, for instance, I do the daily squats on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I do them on Skype with Baron when he's doing them. And they always go better than when I do them by myself. It's having a partner helps you get that motivation to continue to move. Tip number three, track your progress. We're big, big, big on tracking progress. As you know, we have the stick to it habit calendar that we use here for tracking progress. I also use a Google Drive to track all my clients' sessions to see what kind of training implements they're using and how they're improving. And for us, tracking is one of the biggest key components and commonalities amongst the most successful dieters, amongst the most success successful fitness gurus. If you ask them all, they all could go back and show you these old training logs from 1994. And they have nutrition logs that go back from way before. So if you're tracking, it's just proof in the pudding to yourself whether or not you're on the right path or you're not. It shows you the data you need to move forward. Tip number four, invest in portable equipment. I'm a big fan of the kettlebell. The kettlebell is the move for us. Uh, the kettlebell swing, a very dynamic posterior chain movement. I think it's one of the best things to have at home is a, a medium weight kettlebell. So if you're a 170 pound person, I would pick maybe something like a 40, 50, 60 pound kettlebell, something like that. You can kind of use proportions uh, to guide you on that, but having that kettlebell at home, but not only having it at home, but actually using it, don't waste your money on a big expensive treadmill if it's just going to become an expensive coat rack. So that's our our two cents there on home equipment is if you're gonna get it, make sure you spend the time to diligently burn in the habit of using it so that way you get your money's worth out of it. Okay, moving over to some live check-ins here. I see Mr. Barron and Miss Evelyn commenting, good morning, Miss Evelyn. Day 182, no sugar over 6 grams. Walk 3.47 miles. All right, you're getting in some major walks, Miss Evelyn. Very proud of you. 19 dead bugs. Got my stretches in. Hip exercises done. Sciatic exercises done. Feeling great. Have a great day, everyone. Very proud of you on these walks, Miss Evelyn. I'd like to challenge you one day to try listening to an audiobook on your walk. You love reading, and I just think that maybe you're missing out on a wonderful world of audiobooks. I think you'll really enjoy it. 
if you check them out. Mr. Baron Adams, oh no, what's going on with your mouth? Headed to the dentist this morning. I will pack my habits back up, pick my habits back up tomorrow. That's not good. I hope your mouth is okay. Uh, it must be like an emergency, I'm guessing. All right, moving over now to the uh, habit roll call. The world famous habit roll call. Boom. All right. We got the check-ins from yesterday. I probably read most of those off, but I'll just go through, zippity-dip through them again. Baron Adams, it was a busy weekend with a full day of snowmobiling Saturday and then BMX riding Sunday, ready to get back in the groove today. Squats will be nine. He got those in. Looks like he's going to the dentist today. Mike Wassman, day 11 of creatine and full body workout. Boom, baby. Mr. Mike Wassman, let me know what's going on with that workout. You noticing any difference with that creatine? Chantel saying, everybody have a great day. Mr. Iggy, your buddy. Excited to watch the record attempt. That's the world record attempt I'll be doing March 27th, I do believe. Um, got a massage scheduled later and excited to get off that recovery today. Boom, baby. Uh, let's see. Jonathan Hernandez checking in for Monday. Got my split squats in. 16 reps at 30 pounds. Look at that. He's improving on his repetition count oh, still. Oh, yeah. On his Kaizen factor for his split squats. Good to see, Jonathan, that you're still hanging in there with that Kaizen habit. I think once you start to get to the 50 pound number on that dumbbell for your split squats, you're really going to notice some big changes in your leg muscle girth. Your leg muscles are going to get a lot bigger once you get to around that 50 pound mark. New month, baby. Crazy February, but it looks like I'm making progress. Gained a pound of lean muscle and lost a little bit of body fat, which is awesome. Tracking protein intake. Mr. Jonathan, if you are tracking protein intake, what's the number that you're shooting for? I'm just curious. And how is it going for you? Mr. PJ Keen saying, what's up, buddy? Great la job last night. Thank you. Did the uh, Comedy Central. Not Comedy Central. <laughs> I wish it was Comedy Central. That'd be sick. Hot Breath Comedy Roast. I did a comedy roast, and I had uh, a blast doing that uh, i got such good feedback from like multiple comics saying i did a really good job and being a brand new guy who's never even done stand-up that feels amazing it feels amazing to do that and boy i would love to get paid to write roast jokes i think that'd be so fun sammy gym day leg day cardio mile walk with the pups and she got it in boom baby lou we got mr ken coming in hot with something new here hoping to make a month full with color someday that's what I'm talking about. Oh, I get it. You, like, color in the days that you've trained. Is that what that is? That's rad. I like that. Um, yeah, let's see the challenge. Let's see how the march goes, dude. I can't wait to see how your march goes on that. And Sammy says, Ken, it's also good to have rest days, too, though our bodies need it. That is also true. Uh, there's some debate in my world here as to what qualifies as rest and when do you actually need it. Uh, and I think that most people who, let's say you did a heavy leg day, you did a lot of squats, you did a lot of deadlifts, then you go home and you're like, I don't want to do anything. So I'm just going to sit around. Then your appetite's going to have this compensatory response where you're actually like more hungry because you just trained. And then if you're not moving, your bodies are going to be a little bit like more inflamed. So you could have like this combination of inflation, inflammation and eating more calories, which leads to more lethargy which leads to like even more sitting. So counterintuitively, though we think a rest day might just be like sitting around and doing nothing, I'm really not a fan of just full-blown, this is my rest day. I don't believe in just period, like straight rest. If you're resting, then that means you're asleep. That's what rest is. I think doing things like dynamic high kicks, light stretches, mobility work, foam rollers, using massage guns and massage balls, using bands and doing stretches with those, all kinds of stuff like that. That to me is true recovery. That's a recovery day as to where just not moving at all. I don't really consider that recovery. I don't think that's exactly the same thing, but you have to kind of be the governor of that. So, all right, that's everybody's check-ins for the day. Mr. Barron says he's just cleaning and he's getting an early appointment for the day. So I see what you're saying there. All right, everybody stick to it to get to it. I'm Trainer Steve. And I'm out, baby. You gotta stick to it to get to it.